hallelujahs in this song. So it is evident if we sing it. Remember Reuben Kegel, who has cysts on his lungs. Uh, there's, there's so many prayer requests. I'm just going to go through them today. Uh, Tristan Tolney and his family continue to pray for them. Lisa Adams, who has uh, double pneumonia. Brother Howard has asked us to pray for his hip. Also, his daughter Rebecca is, is suffering from some digestive issues. They think it might be an autoimmune related disorder. Please remember her. Uh, they asked for prayer for their son, Tommy Howard, who's suffering from multiple serious issues. Continue to remember Janice Hobbs, uh, who has COVID. Also, uh, Tammy Beck has just been diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. Please pray for her. Remember Tivoli. I don't know what's going on in that situation, but remember her. Take her before the Lord in prayer. Also, Alicia, I don't know exactly what's happening in her life, but again, let's remember these folks to the Lord. Remember Gary Stuckey, who needs a healing. And then finally, finally, let's pray for our kids and teachers who are going back to school, high school, junior high, elementary, college. They're going back this week. Let's remember that God be with them and protect them. Praise God. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Lord Jesus, you are so good and so great. There is not one thing I can do for any person on this list. I can't heal nobody. I can't bring peace to anybody. I can't change their situation. But Lord God, you can and you already are. Lord Jesus, you are bringing healing to those that doctors have written off. Lord God, you're bringing peace to those that, that, that know no peace right now. You're bringing the peace that passes understanding. You're bringing strength to the weak. Lord Jesus, grace to those that need it, God. We are so thankful for your goodness, so thankful for your mercy. Looking forward to see what you do in this service, in our hearts and in our lives. Help us to worship you and praise you and magnify your name. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless this offering that we're about to receive. Use it, Lord God. Use it for more. Magnify it. Multiply it, Jesus. Help it to build this church and this community. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. You're going to want to stand to your feet. Oh, sorry. Take an offering. But, you know, when you get ready. Here we go. <laughs> Anyone who's ever seen mountains of their sins just disappear For anyone who's ever felt the hand of heaven reach down through their fears and dry their tears. For any life that once was empty now finds itself a life full of songs, victory songs. Then you'll understand the reason for the way the saints of God may carry on. Oh, when I shout, so when Shouting from a heart that's been washed clean. When I run, no, I'm running from a past that's been reading. When I sing, no, I'm singing another victory song. When I dance, no, I'm dancing for the right that once was wrong. To the world, we might look crazy. There's just no telling what we're gonna do in that moment, Jesus. The of you. For anyone who's ever seen the mountains of their sins just disappear. For anyone who's ever felt the hand of heaven reach down through their fears and try the any life that once was empty now finds itself alive and full of songs, victory songs. Then you'll understand the reason for the way the saints of God may carry on. When I shout, no, I'm shouting from a 
heart that's been washed clean when I run, no, I'm running from a past that's been reading. When I sing, no, I'm singing another victory song. When I dance, no, I'm dancing from the right that once was wrong to the world. It might look crazy, there's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold. different story, how we brought us out of darkness into light. There's no way to keep us silent, every breath another chance to testify. When I shout, when I shout, no, oh, I'm shouting from a heart that's been washed clean. When I run, no, oh, I'm running from a past that's been reading. world if I go crazy there's just no telling what you're gonna do in that moment Jesus gets a hold of you my past erased my name he changed let's testify if my past erased my name testify my past erased my name he changed let's testify my past erased my name he changed let's testify Testify. Oh, I gotta testify now. My past erased, my name he changed. Let's testify. When I shout, when I shout, oh, I shout it from a heart that's been washed clean. When I run, no, oh, I'm running from a past that's been reading. When I see, no, oh, I'm seeing another song when I dance, no, oh, I'm dancing for the right that once was wrong to the world. It might look crazy, there's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. My past erased, my past erased, my name he changed. Let's testify. My heart that's been washed clean When I run, no, oh, I'm running From a past that's been reading When I sing, no, oh, I'm singing Another victory song When I dance, no, oh, I'm dancing For the right that once was wrong To the world it might look crazy There's just no telling what you're gonna do In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you Testify. Oh, my debt was paid. My 
debt was paid, a way was paid, let's testify. My past erased, my name he changed, let's testify. My debt was paid, a way was made, let's testify. Jesus. Let's one more time. That's not quite loud enough. Let's one more time. Let's lift our voices and clap our hands. Hallelujah. To that one who has kept us through this storm. And he who will keep his hand upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so good. It is so good to see you. Thank you, Jesus. If you can be seated, you may be. If you choose to stand, that's up to you. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to make a bold announcement. We're going to, of course, have our river baptism next week. Amen. And all four ministers that will be baptizing people have already had COVID, so you can't get it from them. Okay? So you can't get it from them. But I, the bold announcement that I'd really like to make is these doors will never be closed again. We will never close these doors again. As long as I'm the pastor here, we will never close these doors again. We're going to take whatever precautions we need to take but God intends for us to gather ourselves together. He intends to wash over us. 
with His Spirit the way that He is this morning. Hallelujah. We're wearing masks and we're fogging every week with the, that crazy fog that, that kills everything. So don't come in while we're fogging because you are an organism after all. Wednesday night, we're resuming all of our uh, services and all of our meetings. Uh, starting point, is that right, on Thursday? Yes, th starting point Thursday at 6. Courage to Heal, are we going with that? Courage to Heal at 6.30. Uh, men's Bible Study at the Bryant Cafe at 7.30 this coming Saturday. And uh, like I said, the river baptism is on. Uh, our clothing closet, if you have any nice clothes that you'd like to donate to the clothing closet, this time of year people are going back to school. If you would like to donate new clothes, uh, underwear, socks, that type of thing, or just uh, T-shirts and, and whatever you'd like to, to donate to the clothing closet that's nice stuff. We really need some nice things. This is the time of year where clothes are needed more than ever. And... So don't forget the closing closet or the food pantry. There's a lot more needs right now than there was six months ago. And uh, if you've not donated to the fish fund, uh, that's always in need. And, and the fish fund and the food pantry and clothing closet, are they help so many people that are working hard or so many people that have lost their jobs. And so uh, let's just remember to donate to that. And, and again, as Brother Tim said, I just had an opportunity recently to review our our finances and I do that every every few days or every few couple of weeks but I would just like to thank you on behalf of your pastor I'd like to thank you and I'm on behalf of the board membership and the leadership thank you you know you know the scripture tells us that where our treasure is that's where our heart is and during this time of tumult both financial hardship and tumult you've chosen to be faithful to the house of God not only in coming but in giving and, and people that haven't been able to be here for months because of health concerns continue to be faithful in their giving and um, that's remarkable that is remarkable like brother Tim said that we're in a better position financially than we were when the pandemic began. So give yourself a hand. And we've had a lot of projects going on. We've had uh, 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 the, the out front project and the upstairs project, and we've had to uh, make a lot of changes to the kitchen by law and all these things that, that cost a lot of money. And we're still doing better than we were. And I, I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And you know, you really know, you really know who you are. You really know who you are when the chips are down and you give anyway. Whenever you may not, you may not be doing the best that you've ever done, but you give anyway. And you give out of your need and not out of your, out of your bounty, out of your plenty. And so that's, I'll tell you what, God sees that. God sees that. He really does. I don't talk about money very often, but I'm just so proud of you. I'm so, just so proud of you. You know, I know where your heart is. Amen. God knows where your heart is. This morning, I'd like to welcome uh, Angelic Clement, Clemenson. Where are you at, Angelic? Right back here. So good to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. Just got to be careful who you're hanging out with, though. Good folks, good folks right back there. Sherry Morgan, right over here. So good to have you. All the way from California. All right, you win the award, I think. Sometimes we have people from Africa, but you're, you're, I think you win the award today. So welcome. Welcome to New Beginnings. And uh, it's so good to have all of you. But I got a very special announcement, and then I'm going to shut up. And we're going to worship some more and enjoy the written spirit that's in here today. 
But we have a birthday. Where's Lisa? Lisa is 27 today. It's not... Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You got to start hanging out with a younger guy. <laughs> but no, we're, we're about to sing again and worship the Lord once again. And then uh, Brother Dennis has a not just a good word from the Lord. Every word that, comes, that proceedeth out of the mouth of the word of the Lord is wonderful. But he's got a very special message for us today that he's going to bring to us. But for now, stand with me and let's sing and worship and let's, let's prepare our hearts, prepare our hearts and our souls for the hearing of the word. Amen. Let's just worship together. Doesn't it feel good in his house today?
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Every prayer that you've answered, I've rested in every maker, miracle worker, promise
recently and in your prayers today I would ask each and every one of you to lift up Dana O'Conn we're in Louisiana tomorrow we'll be burying her husband Tommy a great man of God a great man of God and so remember Dana today lift her name up in prayer today she loves this church she loves she loves all of you and uh so just remember her in prayer. Right now, I would like to bring to the pulpit our own Brother Dennis Bledsoe. He is, he is not only a, a really good preacher, but he is a tireless workman for God. 99% of what you see or, or, or what he does is unseen. He really works hard every day for the, for the church. And, but I'll tell you what, I've... He's given me some previews today's message, so really prepare your ears and your hearts for the hearing of the word. It's going to be a, a life-changing message today. Let's give him a hand. Oh, come on. Somebody can praise him a little better than that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I am so thankful to be here this morning. How I, Brother Tim said something about prayer, and it went to my mind about fasting. You know why we fast? We don't fast to change, God, change God's mind. We fast that we get our mind in line with Him. If you're thinking you're going to change God's mind by fasting, you're not on the right road. But if you want to get your mind right where God wants you to be, then you might as well go ahead and fast. That's just extra. That's not part of this morning. But when Brother Tim said that, oh, that just came all over me. If you have your Bible, whew, there is such a burden about this message, I have had this message for about two to three weeks, and and there's such a burden for this message. I'm going to ask if you would help me preach this morning. Luke chapter 19, verse 3. And he sought to see who Jesus was. I want everybody, that last phrase, that phrase right there, and he sought to see who Jesus was was let's say that again uh, together and he sought to see who jesus was but could not because of the crowd now if you want to use my vernacular it says he was short in stature we're just vertically challenged we're not short we're just vertically challenged but it wasn't that he stood in the crowd and experienced the motion. He sought something. He 
figured out a plan to see who Jesus was. I'm going to ask if you would just let your Bibles down. Lift up a hand to Him this morning. And if you want to see who Jesus is, be attentive to what God has for us this morning. Mighty God. Open our hearts, our ears, our eyes this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I'm not preaching on Zacchaeus. But I'm preaching on the tree. Oh, that I might find a tree. Zacchaeus couldn't see or he couldn't get to Jesus, not because of the crowds, but he couldn't get or the crowds were preventing him from getting there. He just couldn't get to the through the crowds because they were wanting something from Jesus. They were trying to get to Jesus. They were worshiping him. But because he was prevented from getting to Jesus, what he did is he looked down the road and he seen a tree and he said, I'm going to run to that tree. Oh, that we might find a tree. We've got to have worship. I've loved this morning. But we've got to be able to see Jesus on the other side of the worship. We can't, when worship stops, we can't check out because it's almost time to go to the restaurant. It's now time to learn and I begin to see who Jesus is. Oh, that I might find a tree. When worship and church gets in the way, Oh, that I might find a tree. The law of Israel, to sacrifice, became an obligation. They weren't doing it by faith. They were doing it because they just did it Sunday after Sunday or Sabbath after Sabbath. When obligation replaces faith, oh, that I might find a tree. When I look at my works and say, I've done all that I needed to do, I checked it off the list Sunday, Brother Jim. I could go home. I've just met all my requirements for what God wanted me to do today. Oh, that I might find a tree. Turn with me to Luke chapter 18, verse 18 through 30. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What a great question. Jesus said, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not fear, bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. Can you see him going? Check. Do not commit adultery. Check. Do not murder. Check. He checked all the obligations off. He said, I've done this from a little boy. I remember going to Sabbath with mom and dad. I remember every time I was there. I can read the Shema backwards and forward. I could tell you every holiday. I could tell you everything you would. He said, I've done everything that I was required of for me to do. Jesus said, when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, but you lack one thing. Can you imagine the look on that man's face? What do you mean I lack one thing? I've kept it all. He said, sell all that you have and give to the poor and follow me. The Bible says some trust in horses and some trust in chariot, but I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your pocket. It doesn't matter how well you understand. It doesn't matter if you're here every Sunday morning, Brother Ashton, and you're going to church. Until I see who Jesus truly is, it's just going through the motions. Whoo! Somebody needs to help me preach a little bit. Verse 23, but when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. He did not see Jesus. What he saw was the excitement. What he saw was wanted to be a part of what was going on. He didn't see who Jesus was. He just wanted to be a part of the in crowd. 
He liked worship. He liked what it was all about. But when Jesus said, this is who I am, he checked out. Mm. Then the question was asked, verse 26. They said, then who can be saved? What Jesus just did, he radically overturned their whole thinking. Because at that point in time, if you had enough money to go ahead and put the, the alms into uh, the, the, the box and you could be ahead and you were, you were a wealth uh, influential, you were on your way to heaven because you kept everything. You were saved, but it was the poor man that was a sinner. It was the man who couldn't bring the good sacrifices. It was the man because he didn't have enough money to keep the obligations up. Yet, he didn't find a tree. Here, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He had to go through Samaria. He had to go through Galilee, where he encountered a rich young ruler. Now, he's about to encounter another rich man. He just got done with one rich man. He's getting ready to enter into Jericho. Luke chapter 9, 19, verse 1 through 10. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now, behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector. He wasn't just sitting by the wayside taking the money. He had everybody else underneath him. He had his own coming in. He was taking a little bit from everybody else. He was rich and he was influential. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was short of stature. So he ran ahead and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I'm going to your house. All the people along the, the thoroughfare there, all the crowds worshiping, all the crowds raising their hand. It was Zacchaeus that when he looked up into the tree, he said, you're the one I want to go to the house with. Mm. Zacchaeus stood, so he made haste, verse 6, so he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. The other rich man went away sorrowfully. Zacchaeus came in with a joy in his heart because all of a sudden the king of kings looked up and said, that's who I want to go to home with. That's who I want to have Sunday roast with. That's who I want to have barbecue with. He said, I want you. Who? Then Zacchaeus stood, and he said, Lord, I, I give half my goods to the poor. Wait a minute. The other man was checking everything off, and when he got to this point, Jesus said, sell all you had. He went away. Jesus didn't even have to ask this one. He was already ready to give everything up. Why? Because he seen who Jesus was. Mm. I give half. Of my goods to the poor, and if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, uh, accusation I restore four, fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. Mm. He said he also, also, he didn't put him in with the Pharisees. He didn't put him in with the rich. He said he also is a son of Abraham. Romans chapter 9 verse 6 through 8. But it is not the word of God has taken of no effect for they are not all Israel who are of Israel. See Abraham after Sarah died he had other wives. He had other sons. He had other daughters that, had, that were born unto him. It wasn't those that were out of Abraham. What it was was those that were out of the promise. It was out of Isaac. See, that's what the Holy Ghost is all about. It's the promise that puts us in to the family of God. It's the promise that puts us in. He cuts us off at the old vine and he puts us in the new vine and we become a new creature in him because of his spirit. Verse 8 said, that is those who are the children of flesh. He said, these are not children of God, but the children of the promise. And this is promised to your children and their children and their children. 
if you're of the promise, you are a child of Abraham. Not only that, it was accounted to Abraham because of his faith. He was the father of the faithful. So let's look at the sycamore tree. I told you I was going to preach on the sycamore tree. Sycamore tree was a large spreading tree. It produced edible fruit just like a fig. In fact, it, it, it uh, produces the same way as a fig. And I've preached on this before, but I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. See, when you have a fig tree, a fig tree does not bloom. What a fig tree does, it puts off a little wooden shoot. And in that little shoot is the bloom itself. And as that bloom begins to mature, the hardness... Somebody needs to get a hold of this. The hardness begins to soften up a little bit. And it begins to grow a little bit. And it begins to produce the fruit of whether it's a sycamore fig or a fig tree. And the fruit is produced before the leaves ever hack. Why do we have that spirit within us? Because it needs to get rid of the hard exterior stuff. ourself and begin to soften us before. Why do we worship? It's so the Holy Ghost can begin to plow your heart to be able to receive the fruit of the Word. Hallelujah. The sycamore tree bears the fruit like an ordinary fig directly on the stem. It bears the fruit. It's a little bit more inferior. Remember that. It's a little bit more inferior than just a regular fig. The wood is light, durable, and it's good for carpentry. In fact, Brother Darrell, when I read this, I thought about you, and I thought, Brother Darrell's going to like this. They, the Egyptians used to make their sarcophagus out of sycamore trees. They would make their coffins out of sycamore trees. To think about how pliable that must have been to be able, and durable, to be able to fashion it. It was fashionable. The wood wasn't something that was hard. I mean, uh, how many woodworkers we have in here? How many times do you want to get a hold of a piece of oak? The, wor- the wor- Brother Hanley, the worst piece of wood to drive a screw or a nail through is an oak, especially if it's got a knot in it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but this wood was pliable. This wor- wood can be made into fashioning into different things. Psalms chapter 78 Verse 47 said, And he destroyed their vines with hail, their sycamore trees with frost. See, this tree was still very fragile. First Kings 10, chapter, uh, verse, First Kings chapter 10, verse 27. The king made silver as common as Jerusalem as stones. He made the cedar trees as abundant as the sycamore, which were in the lowland. These trees were very plentiful, but they grew in the valley. They didn't grow on the top of the hill. They grew in the valley. I told Brother Tim, and I've told several, this, this is my, my new saying. I love Amos 7. Amos, Amos was called to be a prophet. And he answered, and he said, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet. He said, I, 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 normally a prophet would come, his father and his father, and his father would have been a prophet. But he said, I was, no, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet. He said, but I was just a sheep breeder and a tender of the sycamore fruit. Hallelujah. First Chronicles chapter 27, verse 28 says, Belhanna, the Gadarite, was over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the lowlands. And Josiah was over the store of oil. There was oil that was produced from the sycamore trees. There was oil that was produced from the olives. And this man was over the storehouse. Oh, that I might find a tree. See, I'm not looking to live on the mountaintop. The higher you go on the mountaintop, you begin, the, the vegetation begins to become thinner. You go up, I, I remember growing up, uh, in, 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 I grew up in California. I loved it. I could ski in the, at, snow ski in the evening, and I could surf in the morning. I could be in, in, pushing out at Huntington Beach at 5 o'clock in the morning. By 3 o'clock, I was back up in Big Bear skiing up there. But as you went on the lift and as you got higher, and you would start about five to 6,000 feet, and we got into seven and 8,000 feet, the vegetation began to go, and it was nothing but rocks. 
and you begin to ski back down. But see, it's the valley that you find the tree. In the midst of the valley, I find the rose of Sharon. In the midst of the valley, I find green pastures. In the midst of the valley, I find a cool brook of everlasting water. In the midst of the valley, I find the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. In the midst of the valley, I find a tree. If you're going through a valley, you might as well go ahead and thank God because he is in the midst of the valley. Mark chapter 11, 12 through 14. And then we're going to pick it back up at 20. Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he could find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves it looked pretty it had the green foliage the leaves are sitting there just dancing in the wind it looked just as pretty as pretty can get but when he got there there was no fruit there stood a tree full of life but the bible says that if a tree doesn't bear it doesn't care how good it looks I don't care how many times you come to church. If you don't know who Jesus is you and you're not producing fruit, he's going to cut you down a little bit. The first time, the Bible says, it's going to prune it back. The second time, if it still doesn't do it, he said, let the, the, the Lord began to talk about a parable. He said, let me dig around it a little bit. Let me fertilize it a little bit. And the Lord said, if it doesn't produce again, you might as well cut it off and put it into the fire. If you're playing church today, you better quit playing church today. You better find out who Jesus is. If you're tired of going without fruit, it's now time to find who Jesus is is verse 14 in response Jesus said let no one eat fruit from you ever again and his disciples heard it now in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots and Peter remembering saying Rabbi look the fig tree which you has cursed has withered away Hallelujah. Where do I get that fruit? It's the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. That's where I get my fruit. It's the seed that He plants within me. It's His Spirit that He plants within me. We find two very we find two trees rich and full of leaves. One tree sat out there and said, Lord, I've done it all. But he bared no fruit. There was a sycamore tree that bared one piece of fruit, and his name was Zacchaeus, because he looked up at Zacchaeus, and he said, because of your fruit, because of your humbleness, because of your meekness, because of your willing heart, I'm going to your house today. Matthew 21, 8 through 11, and the very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the tree and spread them on the road. This whole scenario from the rich young ruler to Zacchaeus to the incoming of Jerusalem, it was a it was a process that went through. In fact, before he even got to Jericho, the blind man said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they tried to get him to shut up. All this time, miracles are happening. All this time, he's touching people. Verse 9, and the multitudes who went before him. I looked at this, the multitudes. You know who he was talking about in the multitudes? It was the 70, Brother Tim, that he sent out before him. It was his disciples that went out before him. They had already went out before him and began to tell the world about who Jesus was. When he entered into Jerusalem, they went before him saying, Hosanna, King of kings, Lord of lords. Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he came into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Still hadn't seen who Jesus was. One man 
climbed the tree and seen who Jesus was. A nation still could not see. Back, verse 11 says, Oh, the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. They counted him as a prophet. Jesus enters into Jerusalem to the crowds, sees the fig tree, curses the fig tree, drives out the money changers, sits in the temple, and heals the sick, and they still didn't see who he was. They wanted to worship. They wanted to raise the hand. They want to give him praise, but they didn't, couldn't get out of the crowd. It's time that we get out of the crowd and begin to see who Jesus is. I need to find a tree and to look up over the crowd and say, that's who Jesus is. Oh, mercy. Woo. John chapter 19, 17 through 19, and he bearing his cross, went out to a place called the Place of the Skull, which is called in Golgotha. See, for three and a half years, Brother Jim, Jesus was looking for a tree. For three and a half years, he was healing people, but he was looking for a tree. For three and a half years, he was feeding the hungry, but he was looking for a tree, Brother Ashton. For three and a half years, he changed people's life, but he was looking for a tree where they crucified him. Two others with him, one on either side, Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote the title and put it on the cross, and the, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. They still didn't see who he was. For this tree, not only do we see Jesus... It wasn't the tree that we see, but it was the fruit that was hanging on the tree. It wasn't the, the, the cross itself, but what it was, it was the fruit that was hanging on that tree. Because that tree became so precious that the oil of the healing began to flow out from that tree that tree. Not only that, but mercy and grace from the fruit that was on that tree began to pour out on that. At the base of that tree, I see a crimson stream of blood, and it flows from Calvary. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to stand and worship him right now. Somebody needs to go ahead and just let God be God right now. Hallelujah. From that tree, salvation through baptism, through the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. For one rich young ruler, it was about the everyday ritual. For Zacchaeus, it was about Jesus. The crowd was about the moment. The tree meant eternity for Zacchaeus. Where when we stand in the valley of decision, there's a tree. And we've got to make that decision. Am I going to look to the tree or I'm going to go my way? John 12, 25 through 30 says, And he, he who loves his life mm, will lose it. See, Zacchaeus could have stayed very inconspicuous in the crowd. He could, have, he could have worshipped with everybody else, coach. He could have felt the emotions. He could have felt all that was going on. He could have went home and said, boy, we had a church service today. But he took a chance. Because, see, you got to understand, as a publican and a chief publican, you weren't very well liked. Because you were taking the tax money. You were taking a little cut from everybody else. Not only did the people not like him, but the guys he worked for didn't like him because they would take a part. Uh, he would take a part of their cut, and they would have to make it up so that they made their quota. So instead of staying in the background, Zacchaeus ran to see a tree and climbed up in the tree, hoping that he would be inconspicuous. But there stood and there hung a fruit of the Spirit that God was pouring out that day. Anyone
one who serves me, let him follow me. One thing thou lackest, sell all and follow me. That's full on commitment. That means I'm going to trust no matter what. I'm going to trust you even if I don't have enough in the refrigerator. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust you though that I'm walking through the valley that because I know sooner or later I'm going to find a lily. My, now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said, it was thunder. Others said it was an angel that spoke to him. They still didn't see who he was. And Jesus answered, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. John 12, 31, 32, now this is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. While you're standing in the valley of decision, there's a cross on an old rugged hill. And we need to look at that and say, this is who he is. Hallelujah. Two men sought out the attention of Jesus to be seen. One ran ahead. One checked off the commandments of God. But yet here we find ourselves amongst the crowd. We've worshipped and I loved it. I'm going to get in trouble. As I told Brother Jim, my wife was about that far from shouting. And if she would have shouted, I wouldn't be preaching right now. I'd still be running. I love to watch her shout. But let me tell you why. Not only why I love my God. But let me start it this way. Let me tell you why I love her. That beautiful lady sit right back there. I don't love her because she's a great Italian cook. Lord knows it's taken me a year to get rid of the evidence of that. I don't care. I don't, I don't love her because she gave me two beautiful children. One beautiful children to him. Uh, <laughs> no, he's good. Thankfully, he looks like his uncle. Uh, I don't love her because she keeps a good house. What I love her is the way she makes me feel. So you know what the best day of my day, the best part of my day is, is when we sit down to eat in the evening, and she reaches over and she takes my hand and we pray. All I have to do is she'll walk by and touch my hand. And I still get weak in the knees. I love to be. We we could sit in the house and not say a word. And and I'm thankful that she's here today because it's just that presence of us being together. That's why I love her. Now, let me tell you why I love my God. It's not the blessings. He's blessed me from time and time again. It's not the healings. He's healed. He's healed that one over there. He's healed Rebecca. He's healed us over and over and over again. What I love about my God is the way that he makes me feel. When I'm walking through the valley, I feel his presence. I got up at 3.30 this morning. I got up and got showered at 4 o'clock. I've been here since 5, 4.45. I'm not bragging, but I've been battling with this all week. But as I sat within my office and I began to pray, the presence of the Almighty God began to swell all over me. And I began to weep because I love the feeling of who my God is. I'm going to say it. I'm going to get in trouble. If he never blessed me again, I'm still going to love him because I know who he is. Hallelujah. See, Jesus said, ye are my witnesses. Witness to men not only of his doctrine, but his life. How can I be a witness of him if I don't show who he is? 
Brother Scott said it. Brother Tim said it. We've said it all through. I've got to see, you've got to see Jesus in me. Because if there's enough Jesus in me, you don't see my faults. I got a muffled amen on that one. If there's enough Jesus, if there's enough Holy Ghost that's inside me, if I could get past the crowds, you won't see my faults. Don't mean I don't have them, but you won't see them. Zacchaeus, let's stand. Zacchaeus could not see over the crowds. He was caught up with all the emotion of the moment. But yet he wanted to see more. He wanted to see Jesus. Zacchaeus could have stood there and felt the energies and went home and said, what a great service. Sister Crystal, that worship was just off the hook. But never, ever saw Jesus. I'm tired, folks. I'm sorry. I'm tired of seeing these altars full. I love these altars full during worship. But I'm tired of seeing these altars empty when the altar talk call is given. Because we check out after worship. We put all our emphasis in the midst of worship. And we don't see who Jesus is. It's time these altars are full. If there is any time that these altars should be full right now, I don't care if you got to have a mask on. I don't care if you don't have a mask on. He said that Zacchaeus sought how to find who Jesus is. If you ain't got enough Jesus to find, to seek out who he is, let me tell you who he is. He's the lover of my soul. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. Whoo! Through all those people, it was Zacchaeus that he said, I'm going to your house. In fact, when he said, Brother Scott, I'm going to your house, all the Pharisees said, Whoa, wait a minute. Why are you going to his house? You should be coming to our house. He said, For such as this, the, I came to save that which was lost. He said, if they don't need a doctor, I didn't come to them. It was Zacchaeus who needed something more than riches and fame. He needed to see who Jesus is. There's a song. I love this song. It says, when I close my eyes, I can see your glory. When I raise my hand, I can touch your face. When I bow my knees, I stand before you. And Christ is formed in me. I'm going to ask that they would begin to sing. I'm going to make a plea for these altars. And if you don't feel comfortable coming to these altars... I'm going to make a plea that you find a place, a spot right where you are and begin to see who Jesus is. How do I see him? I begin to lift up his name. Brother Tim said it Wednesday night. I get into his word. Last Sunday, Brother Jim was preaching and he read two verses. And I'm halfway through the next sermon because I begin to see it and I've read it over and over and over, but the Lord opened it up to my heart and my eyes. As they sing, I would like everybody just to raise a hand right now. Let's just begin to seek after Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to be with you. Just want I have battled with this message. It's not a shouting message, but it is a message that I believe God is saying it's time to step out 
from the crowd and let me see you. See, the, the rich young ruler wanted to see, be seen by Jesus. Zacchaeus just wanted to see him. Do you want to be seen by him? Or do you want everybody to see you seeing him? Awake my soul. Prepare an entrance for your glory. Let my heart become a throne for you to dwell. And when I need your Holy Spirit, more than life, it's simple. Then Christ is formed in you. Come on, let's just raise a hand to Him this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, somebody needs to step out. These altars are beginning to fill up. There's people beginning to see who Jesus is. If you're tired of playing church, you need to see who Jesus is. This. I can touch your face when I bow my knees. Oh, I stand before you. seeking after that fruit upon the tree today. Hallelujah. There's a family that's seeing who Jesus is right now. There's young men beginning to see who Jesus is. What are they doing? They're stepping out of the crowd and saying, I want more. for your glory. strong enough to step out and say, I want to see who Jesus is. Are you strong enough to say, I don't care where I was. I don't want to stand amongst the crowd and say, who is this? I want to stay amongst the crowd and say, that's my Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just wanna be if with you, you haven't been baptized, just the water is right. What does hinder you? So we'll sing hallelujah till you come again. If you haven't received the Holy Ghost, then we'll it's dance here. in your presence till So we'll sing hallelujah till you come again, till you come again, and we'll dance in your presence till you come again. 
Hallelujah. You know, whenever Zacchaeus climbed up that old sycamore tree, how many of you learned about that in Sunday school? I hope all of you did. He was climbing that tree so he could see the miracle worker that Jesus was and still is today. But whenever Jesus told him, came to him and said, Zacchaeus, today I will come to your house. He had, I, I believe that Zacchaeus had no idea that not just a miracle worker, not just a prophet was coming to his house. I don't believe he had any idea who was coming to his house. Whenever he saw Jesus, he still couldn't see who Jesus was. He just saw the miracles. I'll tell you what. How many of you in here are tax collectors? Any tax collectors in here? Good. I can speak freely then without getting turned into the IRS. How many sinners do we have in here? You know, I still don't care a whole lot for tax collectors. I suppose they can be saved. It's a stretch. But it doesn't matter what sin you committed. Basically, Zacchaeus was a thief from his own people. It doesn't matter what sin you've committed. I want you to hear me for a second. It doesn't matter what sin you have committed. Jesus wants to go home with you today. Amen. And there's not a reason why. There's not a single reason why that Jesus can't go home with you today. And let me tell you who went home with Zacchaeus. It wasn't just a prophet. It wasn't just a miracle worker. He was the King of kings and Lord of lords. He was the God of all creation. And He was that sacrificial Passover lamb that walked through the door of Zacchaeus' house. And I would ask you, I would plead with you today, do not go home without Jesus. Do not go home without salvation. Allow that Passover lamb to go home with you. As they sing and as, the, as we worship once again, I'm going to ask you again, if you have not repented of your sins, if you've not been washed in the blood of that, that Passover lamb named Jesus, if you've not taken on his name in baptism and received his spirit, don't go home without Jesus. He wants to come home with you today. Hallelujah. Let's sing. Let's worship. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want.
like to be baptized this morning. Angelic is going to be baptized this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else who would like to be washed in the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah.
just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. Just want to be with you. Just want to be with you. So we'll sing. Hallelujah. What a name, Angelica. Hallelujah. Today, Angelica is a good name, but it's not as good as Jesus. And today, Jesus is writing his name on Angelica's temple. And from this day forward, she's going to have access to mercy, that throne that is full of grace and mercy and help every day of her life. Hallelujah. And God, Jesus is about, I, I believe that the Lord, His Spirit is about to move in this water. How many of you agree with me that His Spirit's going to move in this water? And Angelica's going to have her sins washed away. And I just believe that she may be filled with the Holy Ghost right here in this water. Hallelujah. How many of you agree with me? Clemson.
Davidson. It is my honor, such a privilege, to now baptize you in the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin. My past erased, my name be changed, let's testify. But I'm going to tell you that this church, as of today, we have new beginnings on the sign. And this is our first Sunday back in the building, and it will never be closed again. This is the beginning of the new beginning. Hallelujah. That we begin again today, and I expect to be doing this every week for the rest of my life. As long as I can do this, we're going to be putting people's sins to rest. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's march forward. Let's do things that we have never done. Hallelujah. Past erased, my name he changed. Let's testify. Oh, yeah. My debt was paid. Away was made. Let's testify. My death was paid, no way was made, let's testify. So when I shall know I'm shouting, from the heart that's been washed clean, when I run, no, I'm running, from a path that's been reading, when I see, no, I'm singing. Another victory song when I dance, so oh, I'm dancing for the right that once was wrong. To the world, it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. My past erased, my past erased. Let's testify, oh, somebody testify, my death was paid, away was made, let's testify, my past erased, my name he changed, let's testify. Death was paid, away was paid, let's testify. So when I shout, when I shout, no, I'm shouting. From a heart that's been washed clean, when I run, no, I'm running. From a path that's been reading, when I sing, no, I'm singing. Another victory song, when I dance, no, I'm dancing. From the right that once was wrong To the world it might look crazy There's just no telling what you're gonna do In that moment Jesus gets a hold of you Oh yeah My past erased My name is let's testify Let's 
presence has been in the house today and for those of you who may not be aware he will be here again on Wednesday <laughs> I know that I'm speaking to a crowd that will probably be here also but I would encourage you I know it's a weary time we're working we have jobs we'll bring folks with you on Wednesday because there is no telling what God can do there is no telling what God can do on a Wednesday so I look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. Go forth. Have a good week.